G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here and in this video we're going to review the accommodation in and around Alton Towers. This will include Alton Towers Hotel, Splash Landings Hotel, Seabees Land Hotel, Woodland Lodges, Luxury Tree Houses, Stargazing Pods and the Hilton at St George's Park, Burton upon Trent. We will try to give a comprehensive overview as getting complete information is a bit of a challenge. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. Okay, we're just going to start off with this map as a bit of an overview. So you can sort of see here, this is the Splash Landings Hotel, which then has the water park there. This is the Alton Towers Hotel. And then in the back of that there, you have then Seabees Land Hotel. Over here is the five Enchanted Village Luxury Tree Houses. And over here, you have the Enchanted Village. Now, on this map, because this is a 2018, it doesn't have in this area here, the stargazing pods and then over here you've got the golf and the monorail now i get that, that this is an infographic but this sort of showing here the amusement park is actually much further straight off to the right of screen so it's a little bit misleading in terms of thinking that you know it's right behind and everything like that when it's actually not and that's what you're going to find with this is that trying to get up-to-date information is actually quite a bit of a challenge so if we have a look on google the satellite view you can sort of see this is it sort of rotated 180 degrees so you have the splash landings hotel here the alton towers here cbb's down here the enchanted uh, village luxury ones there the enchanted village and then the stargazing pods are actually here in this field because they're only built a year or so ago and then this treetop one here is not shown at all and you then have the golf over here and the monorail station there but just to give you a bit of an idea of size to walk from the Alton Towers Hotel where we stayed um, in and around through here through the car park to the side entrance there it's about an eight minute walk so if you're over in one of these ones here then you need to be allowing about 15 minutes or so when we went recently the monorail station is actually closed so it makes it really difficult to get around the park because normally this would take you straight to the front entrance because the park is really spread out we'll just zoom out a little bit and you can sort of see this is then the rest of the park so normally you'd come in here you got the side entrance for the hotel guests and come in and you've got a sky ride which goes up here to sort of the main castle building itself or then straight across here and this is the main entrance the problem with COVID is you used to be able to get on it and go to the entrance now you can only get on it and go in this direction so if you are staying with uh, the kids in let's say the CBBS hotel or something like that the main CBBS land is over near the main entrance which is over here which is a fair walk all the way across there and part of the reason they have the cable cars is this is actually a gorge straight through here so getting uh, straight over to one of these areas is not as simple as what it might look like so that just gives you a bit of an overview of where the hotels are in relation to the actual park itself for a full walkthrough and tour of the actual park and the hotel area then click around the screen and you'll see a video that we've done on that we stayed at Alton Towers Hotel, which has an explorer's theme. The room had a good layout with a moon-based theme. Included was a full English breakfast buffet that had a good selection and never felt overcrowded. There is also a restaurant, but you need to watch out for it not being open for food service. You have to order through the app, but it won't block you from ordering when it's closed. Only way we found out was we couldn't get the app to take a Merlin discount, and then when we spoke to staff about it, they then told us that they weren't preparing food, even though the app would let you order it. When you go in, you'll have a temperature check and they give you a wristband which you may have to show again later. There is a side access to Splash Landings Water Park which is an additional charge. Only disconcerting aspect is it's possible to go from Splash Landings in through the back to get to Alton Tower Hotel without a swipe card. You also get nine holes of extraordinary golf for each night that you stayed. It's okay but it's starting to show signs of its age and could use a facelift. Also free parking is included. As with all the accommodation you have to pre-book. Depending upon the time of year you might need to do this well in advance particularly if you you want to get a specific type of themed room. Okay, so we have the room, you got a double bed up to the view, and if you come back in here, it's the family room. So you've also got kids' bunk beds, 
themed out in like a steampunk theme. There's also an Xbox in the room with a Lego Marvel Super Heroes game. There is also a general courtyard and garden space. Would imagine in the warmer months of the year this would be quite pleasant and there was a tiny playground with some play equipment. Next hotel over is the Splash Landings Hotel which has the water park in it and it's closest to the park side entrance and the now closed monorail. It has a Caribbean theme and rooms can be beach coma, ice age or pirate room. It also has entertainment, buffet breakfast, golf rounds and free parking included. Don't think it has access to the water park but it's worth double checking. CBB's Land Hotel is obviously targeted at younger ages. There are live shows and special games. Theme room includes Bugbees, Octonauts, Swashbuckle or In the Night Garden. There is a buffet breakfast at the Windmill Hotel restaurant included. Luxury tree houses are ironically one of the ones furthest away from the entrance but have their own special buggy service. Each sleeps up to eight people, has a small kitchen or takeaway service. Each has its own hot tub overlooking the forest. VIP parking is included, each having its own personalized nameplate. Other meals are shared with the Crooked Spoon restaurant. Woodland lodges are private luxury cabins, each with their own deck. Can't help but think of hobbits and Middle Earth when I see these. Must be the round doors. Each log cabin has a separate kids sleeping area and the crooked spoon is used for breakfast and meals. Stargazing pods are very minimalist and cater for those on a budget. You can sleep up to four in a pod with communal showers. A complimentary breakfast on the go is provided and like all other accommodation at Alton Towers, early access to the park is provided. There is even a central playground for the kids to explore. And there's a Hilton Hotel about 35 minutes away that we stayed at for one night, um, home of England sports clubs. So whenever they're playing, then they can train, do facilities down here. They also have a, a, um, a pool, which we went into. You have to book that and it's really limited slots. So you've got to call at like 6 and 30 in the morning to book a slot. But as with other things, if you are paying full price, then you can get in it's not too bad because it's good that um, there was only about four four groups of people in there at the whole time and this is the family room yeah basic enough a little bit on the small size for a Hilton and then on the outside you can see through to the different sports grounds and fields that they have and the bathroom is tight and sort of squishy you do have a continental breakfast, but they'll serve it to you themselves down in the restaurant. So overall, the Hilton and St George's, it was adequate for what it was. A little bit on the small side and maybe a tad a little bit on the expensive and obviously just making the best that they can with the coronavirus situation. So the Hilton at St George's is here and it's about a 20 mile drive or 37, 40 minutes to do it. The thing we did find though is because all these are like little country roads and back lanes and things is a number of them actually were closed for maintenance. So and the GPS didn't pick it up so you're circling back around and everything like that. So if you're trying to hit a time to actually get to Alton Towers, just be aware that some of these roads and things might be closed and you might be doubling back and around. So allow for additional time. But you can see it's sort of north of Birmingham and we went up there sort of a day early from London so that we could maximize our time in the park. If you've enjoyed and or gotten something out of this video then hit that thumbs up button or consider subscribing. Would you go? Or if you've been to one of these hotels what did you think? Sound off in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. If you're interested in having a full park time-lapse walkthrough of Alton Towers and picking up some tips to maximize your day, check out this video here. For a review of the three mazes and darkest depths experience, click this video here. Otherwise, this video has a similar time-lapse tour of the whole of Legoland. Or finally, this video will give you a time-lapse tour of Chessington World of Adventures. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time when we talk about all things lifestyle.